Welcome to the Moscow Marsk, a giant on the open seas. It's as long as four football fields, wider than an eight-lane highway, and it's taller than Paris's Notre Dame Cathedral. It's one of the largest cargo ships in the world, and the company says it's also ecological. It's part of the Tripoli fleet, designed to reduce both fuel consumption and CO2 emissions by up to 35% per container. A high-tech propulsion system combined with low-tech sailing. This Tripoli slow steams. The captain sets course at just 19.5 knots per hour. If you are going very slow, you use the least fuel. It's the same when you are running. If you are running very fast, you, uh, you get sweaty and after uh, two kilometers, you cannot go anymore. If you are going, walking slowly, 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 you can, after two kilometers, you can do maybe four kilometers you, because you're not burning so much. Slow steaming has become an industry norm. It burns less fuel and that saves companies money but it doesn't do much to help the environment. Maritime shipping generates some 3% of the world's CO2 emissions. Now that may not seem like a lot, but if shipping were a country, well, it would be the sixth largest emitter in the world. Now the problem is that most cargo ships run on bunker fuel. It's cheap and it's dirty. It emits fine particles into the air, as well as nitrous oxide and sulfur. In fact, it contains 3,000 times the amount of sulfur that diesel does that's used for cars. Now, all of this, though, will soon be changing because in 2020, a cap on sulfur fuel will come into effect. It'll slash the current 3.5% down to 0.5%. And that's got the industry racing to catch up. To make the cut, some companies will simply change fuel and switch to a low sulfur oil but it's more expensive. So is there a way to clean the dirty bunker fuel? Well, that's where scrubbers come in. Behind this wall lies 70 tons of equipment, and it acts like a giant shower. Here we are in the so-called scrubber room. Tell us, tell us what this is. Well, this is the room we built to house the main scrubber units, where the exhaust gas from the main engine will come up, and inside here, there will be generated a, a water mist. The water mist will mix with the exhaust gas and especially mix with the sulfur dioxide in the exhaust gas and thereby clean it out from the exhaust gas. So the exhaust gas that leaves after the washing will be virtually free of the sulfur dioxide. Scrubbers use a lot of energy, which can increase CO2 emissions. And the sulfur-packed wastewater is often dumped. This can lead to ocean acidification. Some operators have dropped oil fuel altogether, and they've turned to liquefied natural gas. The particle emission, the sulfur component is also close to zero, and the NOx will be reduced compared to MGO by 85%. It's at the moment one of the most environmental fuels in the marine sector. Less sulfur, nitrous oxide, and CO2 LNG is cleaner, but it's still a fossil fuel. Methane is released during its production and use and can actually increase the total amount of harmful greenhouse gas emissions. LNG also requires major investment, and only a handful of the world's ports are equipped with refueling stations. Regardless of the type of energy, the ultimate goal is to consume less. Now this is the Estradin, and it's just docked here in Zeebrugge, Belgium. It may not look like it, but it's partly powered by wind. The giant cylinders on the dock are rotor sails, and it's a technology from the past that'll help reach a cleaner future. First developed 100 years ago, Fletner rotors are making a comeback. A group of naval architects from Finland revived the old sail design to increase efficiency. So when there is uh, good wind conditions, we use the, the rotor sails uh, for pushing the ship forwards, and, uh, and by that we save fuel. So it's sort of a hybrid system. If there's wind, you, you get some assistance from wind. If there's not, then, then the ship uh, goes ahead with conventional means. 
It's these conventional means that must change for the industry to clean up its act. By 2050, the sector's CO2 levels must be 50% less than in 2008. So there are essentially three different routes that we've been looking at in detail. One is to use bioenergy, one is to use um, a hydrogen or, or other synthetic fuel which is made from renewable energy, and a third way is to use batteries and electrification. So the technology is arguably already there. What isn't there is the business case, and at the moment society doesn't value zero emissions technology high enough to enable those operators to invest in the equipment to operate at zero emissions today. Shipping could be carbon free by 2035, but it needs public demand to help set sail for greener seas.